Methods can be a tricky concept in Java, but I want to show you through a basic introduction how easy they can be. So let's first declare our class, public class, and then we're going to name it intro to methods. As you can see, I already named my Java file intro to methods, so I'm just going to simply name my class that. And then we have our curly brackets. Now one method that you've already been aware of is the main method. And that's the, the method that the computer or the compiler finds in order to execute the first function or the first statements that it needs to fun uh, that it needs to execute. So we declare that by public static void main string args. And then we have curly brackets for that as well. So anything that happens within the main method will be executed first because the compiler wants to first find the main method and since the main method is called main in its identifier then it will execute whatever happens in between these curly brackets. So let's say that I have an integer a and I set that equal to 5 and I have an integer b and I have that equal to 6. And then I want to print out the sum of those two values. And then I do a plus b. What will happen is a will get access, 5, b will get access, 6. Then we have the arithmetic operator of the plus sign. 5 plus 6 is equal to 11. And therefore, it will print out 11. All right, so 11 gets printed out. But let's say if I want to print that another to the sum of two integers. So I have integer, actually, let me simply just copy. And paste. So we have, let's say, integer C, integer G, and then this has 11 as its value, and this has, let's say, 15. Then we want to print out C plus D. So again, both variables get access, they're added together, and then they're printed out. And 26 gets printed out. 11 and 26, because 11 was first executed, then 26. But let's say if I want to do that again, so I'm going to copy and paste it. So we have integer e, integer f. This could be, let's say, 23. This could be like 34. And then we're going to add e and f. And that becomes 11, 26, 57. As you can see, Right, we're doing the same essential function again and again, right? We are printing out the sum of two integers. We're printing out the sum of two integers, and we're printing out the sum of two integers. And we're repeating the same process over and over again. And what we can do is we can create a method to simplify this into three lines of code. So let me declare a new method. So outside the second last curly bracket, so let me make it smaller. So that you guys can see the ma entire main method. So once you find the curly bracket for the main method, find the ending curly bracket and then press enter. Now I want you to create a method like this. Public static void and then the addition. And then name an addition, right? Now this is the name of the method. And then I want you to declare the arguments. So integer a, and then integer b. Then have an open bracket, and then a close bracket. As you can see, it kind of mimics the same way of uh, the main method. It has the same, almost the, roughly the same declaration, except we have different arguments, and we have a different name. Now. These arguments are a way of passing a variable or passing a number into the method so that it can use it. 
So let's say if I want to pass integer 5 and integer 6, or pass integer a and b, right? We would need to call this method and it would plug those numbers together. So let's first, um, so once those numbers are passed into the main method, let's um, print out the sum. So system.out.println a plus b. Let me do not now for that. And there you go. So it's going to get an integer a, it's going to get an integer b through the arguments when we're accessing this method, and then it's going to print out the sum. Alrighty, so now let's access the method through the main method. So we can erase all this and replace that with the name of the method, then open parentheses, 5 dash, 5 comma 6. We do the same thing for every single method. Addition 11 dash 15, 11 comma 15. And make sure to end with a semicolon because it is a statement after all. And for the last one, addition 23, 34. So this is a way of accessing the method. When we access a method, we always have to use the parentheses. Even if there's no integer a or integer b, there always has to be a method. Uh, sorry, uh, there always has to be a parentheses. And then um, if we do have arguments or if we do have variables within this um, argument, then we have to put variables within our argument when we're calling it. So 5 gets sent here, 6 gets sent here. So this is basically saying integer a is equal to 5, integer b is equal to 6. You don't have to declare it within the method because it gets declared in the arguments and assigned. And then we can utilize those variables when we're printing it in the print statement. Similarly, um, we can do that whenever we access the method. So 11 and 15, integer a becomes 11, integer b becomes 15, and then they add a plus b together and we print that out. Again, 23, integer a, 34 is now integer b. It's pretty much just getting sent in its corresponding location, and then it prints it out. So when we compile and then run it, we should get the same answers, 11, 26, and 57. Now, I want you to try doing the exact same thing, but instead of addition, I want you to do subtraction, multiplication, and division. Feel free to pause the video. All right, I hope you manage that. So we can do public static void subtraction. Hopefully I spelled that correctly. We could do integer a, integer b, system dot out dot print ln, and then we do a subtract b public static void name it multiplication and then we have integer a and integer b and make sure you have your curly brackets again there always has to be a corresponding closing curly bracket. And then A multiplied by B. Again, we do the declaration. Actually, let me add a space so that it looks more cleaner. Public, static, void, division, integer A, and integer B. And the reason why we can consistently use integer a and integer b is because integer a is being declared within the method, right? So whenever you leave that method, that variable no longer exists within the method. So if I use integer a here, integer a cannot be accessed here. Therefore, we can make our own integer a within this method. That is why we can utilize the same variable name or same variable identifier whenever we're utilizing different methods because it does not get accessed or cannot be accessed rather by another method.
and feel free for division to add some casting if you so desire. Alrighty, so let's test this out. So I'm pretty sure addition works because, well, we just tested it out. Subtraction, let's access that. So we name it, since we named it subtraction, we're gonna call it through subtraction. Then we're gonna send two numbers to that, to there. So let's put 10 and, um, let me try three. Multiplication. Let's send five and six. And division, let's send 10 and two, All right? So as I said before, the arguments or the things that were within the parentheses, the numbers are getting passed into the parentheses. So it basically declares it. So the arguments in the method declare it. And then when we're accessing it, we're assigning the value to the variables. So with addition, five gets assigned to A, six gets assigned to B. Subtraction, 10 gets assigned to integer A in the subtraction method and three gets assigned in the uh, for integer B. Alrighty, so five plus six should be 11. 10 subtract three should be seven. Five times six is 30. And 10 divided by two is five. So if I program or all our methods work out, we should be giving these answers. So let's test it out. And here you go. We got 11, 7, 30, and 5. All right, that wraps up our video on methods, and keep on practicing.